Um, I want to read a, uh, a few um, highlighted sentences that I have here from um, a report that was put out by a group called Project Censor. How many people have heard of them? Yeah. They, they, they put out a yearly report at the end of the year of the top 25 most censored news stories in their estimation that were worthy of much better coverage and never got it because the mainstream media didn't want that information to get out. And this particular report, uh, I believe it was in 2003, project, the project censored staff, they have, actually have a staff of people, um, a certain portion of that staff concentrated on 9-11. And then they issued a report, and the report has a big long title, 9-11 pre-warnings, Building 7 Collapse, Flight 77 in the Pentagon, in Israeli involvement, and it goes on and on. But there, there's a, what I think is a crucial bit of information in this report, and I'm going to just, I'm going to read some highlighted sentences to you here. And it, it really follows up on what Lou just said. For many Americans, there is a deep psychological desire for the 9-11 tragedy to be over. This resistance is rooted in our tendency towards the inability to conceive of people we know as evil. Instead, evil ones must be others, very unlike ourselves. These fearful ideas might be described as threshold concepts in that they may be on the borders of discoverability, yet we deny even the, potenti the potentiality of implied veracity. Th something is so evil, it is completely unimaginable. Um, I want to break from this for just a second here to go back to what Lou was talking about. I don't know how many of you have ever heard um, the description of the Jews standing along a railroad siding waiting, waiting to be loaded onto railroad cars, knowing in their heart of hearts that this looked very bad, but still not wanting to admit to themselves that things were as bad as they seemed. It's been described as kind of a survival mechanism that your mind will not let you go to the worst case scenario. It keeps trying to hang on to something. Oh, well, it's not going to be as bad as it looks. It's going to be better. And the truth of the matter is that the people that were involved in the Jewish resistance who actually took up arms had a better survival rate than the people who went along with the authority. So, you know, which was the most effective tactic? If you really, if you really chance whatever. None. Absolutely none. So, the, the term threshold concept has been, has been used to describe those Jews standing on the railroad siding in that the reality of what was confronting them was too horrific for them to accept. Instead, what they did was they said to themselves, things cannot be this bad. You know, people that look like we do, that have been our authority figures all this time, would never do anything like that to us. And they clung to that until they were marched into the gas chamber. Okay. A threshold concept facing Americans is the possibility that the 9-11 Commission report was on many levels a cover-up for the failure of the U.S. government to prevent the tragedy. Deeper past the threshold is the idea that the report failed to address sources of assistance to the terrorists. Sources of assistance to the terrorists. Now we're getting to the dark, dark stuff that people do not want to confront. The idea that someone in the government of the United States may have contributed to, may have contributed to may have contributed support to such a horrific attack is inconceivable to many. It is a threshold concept that is so frightening that it brings up a state of mind akin to complete un unbelievability. But doesn't it make Spider, at that point, that's the threshold point. That's where you reach out and say, my government's got to save me. That's my authority. I've got to reach for them, and it's right at that threshold. No, it, it's it's the threshold that he's describing here is the threshold where most people don't want to go beyond because it's too ugly. It's too ugly to believe that people in our government, as Lou said early on about people in our government, and I've heard this from so many people, our government wouldn't kill three thousands of its own citizens. Well, the reason they say that basically is because they don't know history. Right. Because history shows that this country has 
done horrific things. Yeah, but they're the same people. What do you mean? They're the same people. They're the same people that will save me from this horrible reality. Well, that's what point. people want to believe, sure. Because it, so, it saves them from the precipice of this darkness. But that same Jew standing on the railroad track is reaching out for the German and says, you, you aren't really going to do that, you know. Well, sure, because they don't want to confront what's really in front of them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. They'll cling. It's a natural human tendency to con to cling to something that's less horrific than what what the reality is right before your eyes, because that's too ugly. All right, I've only got one more sentence here. <clears throat> also, the the 9/11 Commission report failed to address the reasons for the collapse of the World Trade Center Building Seven. Um, that's probably the most glaring part of the 9-11 Commission report. It was that they just, here it was supposed to be a complete analysis of everything that happened on 9-11, and they just completely ignored Building 7 because it's very difficult to deal with. So they just ignored it. They ignored it because they can't explain it. That's right. <laughs> Even worse than that. Or it's not going down, right? Right, it's not going it's down. Not going down. Yeah. It's not going down. They report it 20 minutes before it happened. And, and, you know, 20 minutes before it happened, and you can see yeah. Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. Look at the top right hand side of the screen. It's the Solomon Smith Barney Building, or otherwise known as World Trade Center 7, still standing there. Of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared. It's gone, man. It's gone, man. Well, the Pentagon was pretty obvious too because the an airplane, a jetliner, could have not made the hole in it like a 16-foot wide hole through all that concrete and steel and yeah. huge amount of... Uh, it had to be a missile that hit that. Or, so or something really small, yeah. yeah. And they confiscated all the tapes all around. Yeah, they confiscated oh. everything. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, why did the FBI take confiscate all the cameras and pictures and films? To protect us. To cover up but it's an old pattern in, um, during the Cold War, there was a NATO left behind army that was doing a strategy of tension. The whole time they would create terror situations, blow up people, kill people. Oh, Gladio. In every yeah. country, yeah. Uh, Gladio. Operation Gladio is an umbrella name for literally hundreds of bombings carried out by Western intelligence agencies in NATO in Italy, Western Europe, the Middle East, Latin America, and Asia. From 1947 until 1981, Italian presidents have gone public admitting Operation Gladio targeted innocent civilians and was to be blamed on leftists and communists. On November 22, 1990, the European Parliament had a resolution condemning the activities of Operation Gladio. The former Italian intelligence chief has come clean concerning Gladio's actions as well. Many other countries have declassified documents concerning Gladio. It is part of the public record that our government and other Western governments targeted trains, buses, schools. Several times operatives zeroed in on school buses, knowing that images of dead children would get the population hopping mad and ready to relinquish their liberties. A particularly bloody bombing at the central station of Bologna, Italy, on the morning of August 2nd, 1980, which killed 85 people and wounded more than 200, 
caused some Italian officials to break their silence and begin to expose just a small part of this wicked operation.